바로 저곳이 가든 스테이지랍니다. 저곳에서는 여러분이 합사하신 치킨 3시 30분. Okay, first tip, come to the Wild Tour gate at Lot World because there's no wait in the line back there to get a ticket and it's also 10% off if you use a MasterCard. Whereas on the other side of the main gate, there's like a half an hour wait just to get a ticket, so I'm going straight in. Places I have a limited amount of either battery power or memory space, so I'm gonna have to unfortunately juxtapose the footage with my iPhone. So apologies for that. Uh, hopefully, I'm staying here for a while too, so uh, we'll actually get to see some stuff. Okay, so that's Tomb of Horror Death to Escape done. Didn't really need to die to escape, to be honest with you. A lot better quality than the scare mazes that we get at home for sure. It's a permanent fixture. Um, a little short to be honest with you. Uh, it's definitely still like, you know, the, the classic grade of scares as far as like, um, you know, motion sensors that blow hot, blow air on you, and a couple of a couple of actors in there too. So it's definitely was, for $3 it was worth it. It just needed to be a little bit longer I think, um, but I, it was still pretty good. Uh, a couple of the attractions were not working as well, so it is what it is, but uh, overall for the quality of horror that they have in Asia versus home, I was in there with the girl behind me in line, so I let them go first and let her get scared, uh, which was kind of amusing because her father was all about uh, basically adding the horror to her uh, experience. So they really do take this stuff a bit more seriously and are more intrepid with their children here. So. If you're coming, you may be encouraged to bring your kids to do things that they normally would not do. So that's Fly Venture done. It's a flying theater, but unlike Snorin at the Disney parks, it's a much larger contraption with three rows of like at least 25 people in each row. And uh, they really put on heavy the wind and the cold and the water effects. You get lots of spray in your face. The uh, resolution on the screen kind of leaves something lacking there. It's kind of fuzzy in spaces and the screen itself isn't so great. But uh, kind of an effective ride, a little bit longer than Soren. I'm uh, gonna give it pretty high marks for that. Like the effort was definitely there. You could ride for what it is. <laughs> Alright, so we're in Magic Island, which is the newer section of Locked World. In fact, it's a second section entirely built on a man-made island and a lake. It's rather quaint and smaller, and because it's colder out here, obviously, the line's a little bit shorter. Um, but that being said, we've got Comet Express here, which has a line that's pretty significant. 60-minute wait this alone, so I'm kind of nervous about getting on my credits today, um, but we're going to deal with it as we have. So we're at Atlantis, I'm going to get in the line now. I have no idea how long the wait is, even though it's got overflow. It's kind of like your Samsung, isn't it? Great features and everything, but it runs a bit crap. Plus the sign doesn't work. 
I may sound like I'm thieving, but it's just, it'd be nice if I at once got someone in line that doesn't want to barge into my ass every three minutes, as if they're going to get onto the ride any quicker, which they're not. I'm actually in hell. I'm ready to just get the magic pass just so I don't have to deal with this anymore. just got off at Atlantis Adventure and to be honest that was one of the best coasters I've had on my trip. It was very short. Well, it wasn't too short. There's like a weird turnaround in the castle when you get into the dragons there or whatever was going on there. Uh, it's kind of cheesy. It took way too long to go up Lift Hill. The sequence immediately after the launch when you go into the castle for the first time it's basically completely dark except for a little bit of light but the effect overall of the high speed turrets quite impressive. I'm gonna go get a fast pass now because I'm obviously not gonna wait in that line and take my chances having to deal with the people that were in the line just a second ago. They honestly ruined half the experience for me so far here at Lot World because of their just brazen, annoying attitudes. So hopefully I won't have any more of that. I've got about two hours left here. I'm gonna try to avoid any of that and get a fast pass. Let's go for five rides. Let's see if I can actually make it worth my while. So here we go. I got my Magic Pass Premium. It's good for five rides. Five rides and it can be five of anything that you want. So I can do Atlantis five times in a row. I made sure of that. And basically there'll be no weight on any of those. And I won't have to deal with the line troubles as well. So I'm gonna get at least two rides, maybe on French Revolution and then maybe one on uh, the spinning coaster that's underground in the island, and maybe two more at Atlantis, depending on my impressions of French Revolution and obviously the spinning coaster. Uh, but yeah, probably a good value to be honest with you. I got an hour and a half-ish, maybe two hours left in the park. Might be able to bang out all those rides within an hour. <laughs> It's a little dark, but I have to sum up uh, French Revolution VR here. Uh, they aren't even doing the VR today, which is fine with me because it's just not worth it as far as I'm concerned. The uh, overall experience, now when you go into this castle building, the majority of the ride is actually in the dark and there's a tunnel of light and stuff and it was really impressive. In the final helix they have these lights, LED lights that run actually underneath the track, like in the actual supports themselves, uh, which are really impressive. Um, overall, the ride experience, not much different than what you would expect from an aerodynamics uh, uh, looping coaster, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a unique layout, however, to this park, and there's a couple of drops before you get into the loop, which is very surprising. There aren't any major drops. The first one is anticlimactic. My ride was on the front of the train so it wasn't really that intense. Uh, would I ride it again? 
I, unfortunately I didn't because I took three rides in Atlantis at the end of the day instead of doing this one again. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the least, the least thrilling of the uh, coasters in this park. But for what it is and the way that it intertwines with this building is very unique and it's nothing taking away from what it is. It's just that the other two coasters here are just uh, way above uh, notch when it comes down to the uh, thrill elements that are offered here. So yeah, French Revolution, third on the uh, list of the three coasters here at this park. And going back to Magic Island, it'll be a lot more tolerable this time. But uh, just a comment, it's a pretty slapdash sort of put together type of place. Um, while it's impressive looking from afar, once you look at the finer details, it's not really uh, of the quality that you would expect from, say, a Universal or Disney park. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the, de the overall impression of the area, it's very small, but for what it is, it's very unique and kind of quaint and sort of inviting now. I'm now talking from the perspective of having my fast pass so I can get through a lot of this. But as you can see, it's kind of emptying out here a bit. So wait, while presumably won't be too long regularly, it's still an hour for French Revolution, and it's still probably an hour for the coaster that I'm about to do next, which will be my last coaster on this trip, unfortunately. Yes, wait is the exact same, which is an hour. And that ride, well, I keep forgetting the name because it's such a weird, odd name. It's Comet Express, which is fine. It's 40 minutes now, which is a lot less. It's 20 minutes less than what it was before, which is manageable, but I'm skipping by that whole process. I'm going straight in. Yes, we're on an escalator going down into underneath the island to go on this ride, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, telling me it's a 15-minute wait uh, for the fast pass here, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm expecting big things then because there's no wait for the other two coasters, and this one is kind of a mysterious coaster. Usual little cube. It's their space now, isn't it? Sure, this coaster is a bit of a mystery. I'm going to try to find out for the greater of the North American coastering world. I've never been on anything like it, that's for sure. I was not expecting that. Not only was that one of the most intense dark ride or dark coasters in an enclosed building that I've ever had, also the effects were just like while they were not like still top rate like Disney quality they were being, like it was out of this world no pun intended because basically the whole theme of the ride is that you're going through three different rooms of planetary solar system situations but uh, the cars obviously spin around but right at the end of the ride in the final room there's just a double helix and the cars basically just keep rotating 360 the entire time and by the time you get to the station you're completely spun to be honest with you it was unreal so I'm definitely gonna rate this one of the best indoor coasters I've ever done if not the best like it was it was that good uh, just for the ride experience alone I have no idea what the ma ride manufacturer is but uh, I can see why they're waiting 40 minutes for this ride because it was really fun. Uh, definitely worth it. To, completely unique to what it is. I've never been on a ride system like it before. Um, yeah, I'm kind of stunned. And even the center room, I don't want to really ruin it. Like, I, it's impossible to shoot on ride on this without a GoPro or something, but it would be pointless because it's while it's still bright, the lighting effects in this ride are still like unreal uh, they they're not like laser show like top quality but what they do with what they have and the center room being this crashed flying saucer that you basically spin around numerous times it was definitely worth it I'm glad that I tried it so I'm having a meal here in the center of 
uh, Magic Island Castle. Now, as far as the food is concerned, if you like fried waffles or waffles with stuff on them, if you like fried chicken, uh, which I probably shouldn't be having considering I had that incident two days ago in Kuan Yu, uh, which is another story for a vlog if you're not watching the full vlog. Um, but yeah, the food selection here is is not so fantastic. But for 8,000 won, you get this. This basically would cost you at a park in the States about twice as much if not more. And it's kind of tasty to be honest with you. So I'm gonna dig in and I get my other three rides in. Second ride on Atlantis Adventure. Ah, oh, the luxury of the Fast Pass. Get it, 41. It's worth it. You have to avoid, you get to avoid all of that. So another unusual thing about the onboard procedures here at this park is that they're a big fan of stretching before you go for your ride. I guess it makes sense on this ride because it's, uh, it's pretty intense when it starts, to be honest. In fact, two of the three rides, or the roller coasters specifically, are very intense experiences. Um, also, the station is very ornate here. I love this station. It's really got some character to it. It's not the highest quality as far as, like, again, the makeup, but uh, it's, uh, it's, for what it is, it's really, really impressive. We'll watch this procedure here. So again, make sure you do your stretches for the ride. Now, just another follow-up on this ride. That first switchback after the initial launch up into the castle building, it's just it's completely catches you by surprise. It's really one of the most uh, impressive elements on a roller coaster I've actually been on because the speed that you take it and the fact that you're going through the dark, you don't know what direction you're headed. Much like how you can't see me, you can't see where you're going. So it's uh, really, really, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I really loved it. Uh, now I'm in a conundrum about whether or not I do French Revolution, Revolution 2 a second time, or if I do this ride again. I've got a limited time. I've definitely made my choice that I'm gonna do the Comet Blaster again, because that ride was just so unique for what it was. So I'm gonna do that right now, and then I will figure out what my third or my fifth Magic Pass ride, but what could possibly be my third ride on Atlantis, or my final ride on French Revolution 2 is, but I'm pretty sure I know what it's gonna be. Uh, it's it's kind of a toss-up, but unfortunately I do think I know. So we're back on Comet Blaster, the most unique ride at this park. We advertise it again now at 20 minutes wait, but to be honest with you, the last time I got into the line here, it was, ten, they said 10 to 15 minutes. It ended up being about mm, 10, and I can see that the line here is a little bit shorter than it was last time, so it's probably going to be about 10 minutes. And I'm gonna be actually on time in this park with my fast pass, which is nice. Second ride on Comet Express. Gotta get the name right, because it seems like the signage, or maybe I'm just confused. But uh, yeah, each seat has a unique perspective of uh, the coasters. Uh, interior elements to be honest with you it must be that the entire base of this island makes up the three rooms of that coaster because they're pretty sizable rooms especially the center room is is pretty massive um, but yeah what a unique coaster what a great ride like it's less disorientating in the uh, seat that I was in this time but uh, yeah each one has sort of its individual orientation it seems uh, it's very kind of really speechless to be honest with you or leaving me speechless because I didn't really expect it to be that intense or that exciting but uh, it certainly is the sound effects are great so there's lots of strobes and lighting effects with no warnings as far as like whether or not you're 
uh, gonna have issues with that. It's just, it is what it is. You're up to your own fate on these rides. Comet Express, probably the surprise coaster of this entire trip. So that's a wrap from all the parks, at least all the major parks, with one left to go. But uh, those Lotte Worlds suck, as I said last night. Well, no, it's again one of these situations where you have to prepare yourself accordingly for what's to come. So thankfully for you, if you're watching this, you'll have a little bit more of an insight into it. Uh, if you're coming with kids, even though they say they're open till 11 o'clock, and even for the major attractions, the major attractions close at nine o'clock, and the kids' attractions close at eight. So plan that accordingly. I actually was planning on coming here from eight to 10 last night, part of my blow up, but it's a good thing that I decided not to because I would have ended up getting on one ride for an admission price of something like 44.1. So that would have really upset me even more to the point where I wouldn't even have come back or even tried or even maybe not come back to Seoul at all. So yeah, there's a little bit of a, it is a Sunday, so it is what it is. And it was Saturday, obviously yesterday. So they are busy here. Uh, it is a massive complex with numerous malls and train stations and et cetera. Uh, am I glad to be done? Yes. Am I glad to get out of Korea because I'm, basically getting on a flight in five hours definitely so I'm tired of being stared at as an attraction here I'm, real, I'm ready to go home and basically just sort of be lost in the crowd instead of being a spectacle <laughs> uh, of sorts in a way so uh, the, the gig is up for Korea will I come back well Lotte World will have to have another attraction even though I didn't get nearly any of the things that I wanted to get done as far as the rides are concerned but uh, they will need another major coaster for me to be convinced to come back here. It's unfortunate because I did want to go on T Express at Everland so if Everland have another coaster opening up who knows I may be back in Seoul before I know it but yeah definitely done with all the long black jackets that say National Geographic on the back and all the perplexing things that Seoul has to offer. And uh, the rest of Korea, to be honest, I loved, but Seoul itself takes a lot to get used to. So that's a wrap from Lotte World.